Well, I might as well tell you now. You lot may all be internationals and have won all the domestic honours there are to win under Don Revy. But as far as I'm concerned, the first thing you can do for me is to chuck all your medals and all your caps and all your pots and all your pans into the biggest flipping dustbin you can find because you've never won any of them fairly. You've done it all by blooming cheating. What's the difference between researching a real life character and a fictional one? And when you're, lo when you're looking at somebody, you're trying to create a character from scratch, from a script. Yeah. Well, so when, you, when you're researching a public figure, like Blair, like Frost, like Clough, whoever, um, all the footage to watch is always when they're on display. They know they're being filmed. They know they're, they're putting out their public image. So what I'm desperately looking for is what is it like when they drop the mask? What, is it, what are they like when they're you know, at home? And, and so you look for tiny little moments that, where people sort of betray themselves. The way I see it, there's no point being in this game unless you want to beat the best and be the best. And that's all the people at Arby want. And if you really have their interest at heart, not just impressing your friends in the director's box, I suggest you keep your eyes on your road haulage business. Keep your opinions to yourself and start signing some flipping checks. There's a good lad. Leave the running of this football club to the professionals. When I watch that bit of footage, you know, there it is. There's the character. That's who I have to be. You know, the end product is there for me. And, you know, with a fictional character, you have no idea where it's going to come. You've got to... You know, the inspiration comes from the script and the story and, and my imagination, you know, connects with it and, and off I go, you know, looking for different things in the research to fit that. But with a real life person, you, you start at the end and then kind of have to work backwards in a way because I don't want to, I, I avoid in any way trying to copy the person for for months. I'd, I'd, I watch every bit of footage I can find over and over and over and over and over, and over again until... Not so that I can copy what he's doing or how he looks or sounds or whatever. It's to wait until something else. Start. He, he starts speaking to me. It's sort of like a, a weird thing. Like, it's like until it becomes white noise almost. I know it so well. I've heard it so many times. I've seen every movement that suddenly I'll, 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 I'll be watching it and suddenly something else will come out. Something will come out of the white noise of information that comes off this person and I'll... And it's, and it's like I'm suddenly seeing who this person is. I'm suddenly, my imagination suddenly connects with them. And, it, and so then, and then at that point, then I start building it up. And that's where you'd still flaming be if it wasn't for me. At the foot of the blooming second division. Nobody remembered you and nobody had heard of you. There would be no Derby County without me. No league title, no champions of England, not without Brian Clough. What I'm interested in is where the stuff that's being hidden bleeds through against our will, you know, involuntarily. That's where we reveal ourselves and betray ourselves. And that I always find is the most compelling thing about watching acting when, when that happens. Apart from the sheer joy of storytelling and narrative, it's in terms of character, I've, I find that really compelling because it kind of allows me to feel, when I'm watching, to feel complicit in what's going on and also like I've spotted something. You know, it allows me to do some work and. I don't feel like, you know, when people talk about, you know, oh, it's, it, you, you know, you're, uh, it's a bit too on the nose, you know, that, that phrase, or it's a bit too, you know, you're hammering that over it. Just let it, let it kind of happen, let the audience in, and then it feels like you've discovered a secret world in the film, you know, and I always find that the most interesting. So, and how people express themselves um, involuntarily. Um, so things like, for instance, Clough in a couple of the interviews that I watched, he does this thing where he sort of rubs his eye like that. And, and you know, I couldn't really describe what that is, but I just get a feel for what that is. And I'll find, as I'm in the scene, I'll kind of, I'll do it. And, and I just kind of go, yeah, that, that sits right. It just works. And there's something about a sort of insouciance and a kind of, I, I don't give a fuck, yeah. yeah. <laughs> you know, there's something about that. And also because he kind of, he was brilliant at, at presenting himself. He was, a, he was an iconoclast. He was a sort of self-mythologizer. Listening to you, I'm struck that this is not just a business matter for you both. It's more than that. It's personal. Am I right? Well, we're very different people, Don and I. Uh, we have different styles in football and in life. I'm a warm man, uh, an idealist. I do believe in fairies, and that's my outlook. Don is slightly different. Uh, there's a hardness 
to him. He's a cold person. No, you don't know and me. And that lack of warmth, that coldness was there. It permeated the club when I arrived.